Welcome to Venti Chic, the place where future billionaires find inspiration. Have you ever wondered how automatic watches keep going without needing a battery? It might seem like magic or perpetual motion, but in reality, it's a brilliant invention that's been refined over centuries. Let's explore the fascinating details behind this phenomenon. Throughout history, the concept of measuring time has been intricately intertwined with the advancement of mechanical engineering. From the ancient sundials to the sophisticated timepieces we have today, the journey has been marked by ingenious innovations. While mechanical power has been harnessed in various forms for centuries, it was the revolutionary invention of the escapement in the 13th century that truly elevated timekeeping to new heights. The escapement, a brilliant mechanism that controls the release of energy from the power source, became the cornerstone of accurate timekeeping. This pivotal invention allowed clockmakers to experiment with different ways of driving their creations, transitioning from the use of weights to the later introduction of springs. As springs became a viable power source, the 15th century witnessed the emergence of the pocket watch, a remarkable achievement that offered portability and convenience. Unlike their predecessors, these early pocket watches required only a brief daily winding to maintain their precision. This breakthrough eliminated the need for frequent adjustments, making timekeeping more accessible and reliable. The fusion of mechanical ingenuity and innovative power sources paved the way for a new era of timekeeping, showcasing how the marriage of science and craftsmanship can shape the very fabric of our daily lives. The situation continued unchanged until 1777, when Abraham Louis Breguet, likely frustrated with the constant task of winding his pocket watch, introduced a concept that aimed to transform motion into energy. While the idea held potential on paper, its practical application faced challenges due to the restricted movement pocket watches typically encountered. Various companies, including Breguet, explored similar concepts, yet the consensus was clear, further refinement was necessary. Consequently, the notion was set aside for the next 150 years, awaiting a more suitable time for development. The beginning of the 20th century marked a significant fashion change propelled by wartime practicality, transitioning pocket watches to wristwatches. This shift made automatic movements more logical. In 1923, British watchmaker John Harwood made a crucial breakthrough by introducing a pivoting weight to his watches that harnessed the wearer's movement to wind the mainspring. This innovation gained attention and support, even though it wasn't without its challenges. The oscillating weight encountered constraints as it moved, oscillating between two stopping points. If you're enjoying our content, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss an update. Recognizing the potential, Rolex took the initiative to enhance this idea, unveiling the perpetual movement just 8 years afterward. In this upgraded version, the oscillating weight gained the ability to rotate freely in both directions, capturing more energy from even slight movements. This pivotal advancement marked the true inception of the modern automatic watch. Patek Philippe has generously revealed the inner workings of an automatic watch in the Calatrava 5180. Let's explore the Caliber 240SQ. The journey begins with a micro rotor, embedded within the movement. As you go about your day, the rotor's mass swings pivoting on three axes. It engages with the keyless works, a term coined due to the absence of a winding key found in older pocket watches. This power transfer to the reduction wheels, which amplifies the torque needed to wind the mainspring, is facilitated by interconnected wheels and pinions, resulting in a more compact mechanism. But what if the rotor spins in the opposite direction? Does it reverse the movement? Thankfully, no. In this scenario, the transfer wheel comes into play. It engages when the rotor turns correctly and disengages when it doesn't. Certain movements use click wheels or switching rockers to ensure power delivery regardless of the rotor's spin direction. The power is then transmitted to the mainspring through the ratchet wheel, also called the first wheel. However, there's an alternative route for power delivery, manual winding. By rotating the crown, the winding stem engages the crown wheel, which further connects to the ratchet wheel. Whether by rotor movement or manual winding, the ratchet wheel tightens the mainspring's coil, linked through a hooked post referred to as an arbor. A sprung pawl called the click spring prevents the ratchet wheel from reversing and unwinding the mainspring. At the opposite end of the coiled mainspring, you'll find the mainspring barrel, snugly housed within. 
For automatic watches, like this one, notches and specialized grease permit controlled mainspring slippage, preventing overwinding. As the mainspring tightens, its tendency to unwind is countered by the click spring, which halts the ratchet wheel's reversal, and propels the mainspring barrel's rotation. Teeth on the barrel's edge mesh, with the center wheel, also called the second wheel, transferring power to the motion works responsible for moving the hands. If you found this video insightful or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Now back to the topic. How do we avoid the mainspring from rapidly unwinding and causing the hands to spin out of control? This is where the escapement steps in. Powered by the center wheel, the energy moves down through the third wheel and then the fourth wheel, which converts the center wheel's hourly rotation into one rotation per minute. The fourth wheel also propels the escape wheel, featuring distinct teeth designed for its role. As the escape wheel rotates, a specifically angled tooth gently nudges the entry jewel and the pallet lever, triggering a series of precise movements. This gentle push causes the pallet lever to pivot around its staff, connecting the exit jewel with the escape wheel, effectively stopping it. At the same time, the balance wheel set in motion by the fourth wheel swings and interacts with the impulse jewel. This maneuver winds the balance spring, gradually slowing the balance wheel's movement before it changes direction. The balance wheel then returns, nudging the pallet lever to its central position, freeing the entry pallet from the escape wheel. While the escape wheel turns, it nudges the exit pallet, causing the pallet lever to return to its initial position. This secures the entry pallet against the escape wheel, providing a push to the impulse jewel on the balance wheel. The balance wheel's oscillation, deceleration, and reversal guide the pallet lever to move back to its central position, releasing the entry pallet from the escape wheel. This elaborate interplay of securing and freeing the escape wheel takes place six times per second, managing the mainspring's unwinding and regulating its pace. The motion works then come into play to propel the watch's hands. Typically, the center wheel directly moves the minute hand, given its hourly rotation and central position. Yet, in this specific caliber 240SQ, the center wheel is positioned off-center. The center wheel's pinion sets the minute wheel in motion, which in turn operates the hidden cannon pinion. This slender pinion meshes with the hour wheel, which freely revolves around the cannon wheel, maintaining a 12-fold factor to synchronize the hourly movement of the minute hand. In watches featuring central seconds, the power from the fourth wheel travels through the center of the cannon pinion to drive the second hand, and that's the essence of it. An automatic watch transforms your wrist's movements into hours, minutes, and seconds. This complex system has developed over a considerable period. Do you think the effort invested was worthwhile, and can this mechanism be enhanced even more? Share your thoughts in the comments. We're glad you joined us at Venti Chic. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all our videos. If there are specific watches you want us to review, please share your suggestions in the comments. Catch you in our upcoming content.